L.A.'s rise to prominence has been described as a marvel of urban growth. But behind the image of an economically robust and culturally vibrant world-class center lies the sobering reality of a city that is the embodiment of social isolation and disconnection. Previous to coming to Los Angeles, I was organizing in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. And I had been here about a month when a friend called and said, you must be so glad to be out of the isolation of, you know, a little border town. And it struck me. I looked around and I thought about being here a month and I told her, actually, I think I've never been in a more isolated place in my life among 10 million people. It seems like the epitome of, of the good life in Los Angeles is to be left alone, to be totally isolated, to be disconnected, not to be obligated, not to be encumbered. Author William Fulton describes in The Reluctant Metropolis that the seeds of isolation were sown early in L.A.'s development. Whereas nearly every other city in the world has grown from a single center, Los Angeles simply appeared when many different centers blurred together. L.A., consequently, is notoriously disconnected and distinctly suburban, a fragmented metropolis, largely bereft of memory of its urban core. Los Angeles has been remarkably effective in dividing people making people feel like that one neighborhood does not connect to another and that limits their effectiveness, both personally, socially, and politically. Fulton concludes, there is a void at the center of Los Angeles, not just a void in the physical center where neglect has created slums, but a void in the political and psychological center where Angelinos decline to take responsibility for a metropolis and an urban landscape that we ought to think is ours. But there is a different story to tell. On July 11, 2004, over 12,000 delegates, representing 125 congregations, schools, unions, and nonprofits throughout Los Angeles County, convened at the Los Angeles Convention Center in a historic attempt to address directly the isolation of LA's communities. They gathered to found an institution called One LA, a countywide, nonpartisan political organization intent on long term social change. The mission of One LA is to bring together institutions who want to develop their own leadership and build power so that they can build standing for families in their community. Unfortunately, we have a lot of institutions whose fundamental role is to teach us what psychologists call learned helplessness. They teach incompetence. They teach the lack of capacity. One LA's member institutions share a desire to be institutions that are engaged in the formation of democratic citizens in the fullest sense, active participants in the public decision-making process, and agents in the creation of a more just society. Five years of careful reorganization through the LA Metropolitan Strategy finally culminated in One LA's founding convention in July of 2004. LA's founding convention on July 11th was about ownership. It was in many ways a, uh, you know, a chaotic day, a very exciting day, a very successful day, but the primary success of it, aside from delivering all the public officials, aside from just busting our turnout, we had over 12,000 people there, it was the ownership on stage and on the floor of the leaders who'd been working for five years to build this organization. It was clear this was their organization. But I am angry because many of my friends graduated from community college and their dreams are full of hope. Why are they
For organizers, it is following a public action that the real work begins. In this, 1LA's founding convention was not an exception. The importance of a founding event is you go back and, and teach recognition and power and ownership. Since the founding, there's been a lot of local actions, small things, uh, but significant things. The school district had a policy which required parents to, to show their driver's license in order to be volunteers in the school district. So we had an action to change that policy. In South Central, leaders were challenged off that action to go in and recruit more institutions. Leaders in the Mid-City, off the anger about the stories of evictions in the Mid-City, worked with local city officials and won for the first time a, a, an eviction prevention plan from the city of Los Angeles. The action's in the reaction. If the reaction hadn't been to go back into institutions and do further actions, then July 11th would have just been a very expensive, very complicated, and time-consuming event. By building a new grassroots political organization, through relationship building and public action, 1LA is creating vital public space in which Angelinos can learn to operate in a new way, and politics can be reclaimed as the activity of ordinary citizens. People have to see and envision the possibilities, so that event was very important, but um, you also see where you're not. Given the scope of this work with Los Angeles and its challenges and you know, all of the diversity and all of the distance and all of the complexity, we're still rebuilding or we're still recruiting, we're still um, you know, creating the base. Because LA is the world capital of immigrants and of transitional communities that are here, if it can be done here, it can be done anywhere. But to be able to really build a collective of, of churches and synagogues and schools and unions and nonprofits who make a claim together on some turf and make a claim about wanting to build some power to change and, and rebuild their communities is, is just uh, is radical and can be a model for other large and complex metropolitan areas in the country. Political change requires the exercise of power. And the way this power is generated is critical. By creating space in which people tell their personal stories and build on issues of common concern, 1LA is overcoming the alienation and isolation that characterizes much of urban life, while creating a powerful organization for the journey ahead.